Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic out there. Today on the podcast, guys, we're going to be talking about how to open the overwing exit on the 737-800, why you should not do that unless it is an emergency, what kind of passengers are allowed to sit at the overwing exits and why, so stay tuned. Right, so the first thing that we're going to mention is that on the 737-800 we have four emergency exits over the wings. The smaller 737 models only have um, two, but the 737-800 have four. What decides on how many emergency exits an aircraft has is the number of passengers, because we need to be able to evacuate the aircraft using only half of the available emergency exits in 90 seconds. Okay, so during the certification of the aircraft, that's what we're looking for. The uh, overwing exits are different than the, uh, the front doors. Now, I've already showed you in one of my previous videos how to uh, open and close the, um, the forward doors and the back doors. The overwing exits are different because they're canopy types. Okay, they are held in place by mechanical locks and also to a certain extent by the air pressure. Now, the, uh, the reason that you you know that we have only certain people that are allowed to sit at the overwing exits are quite easy we need the help of the passengers sitting at overwing exits to open the overwing exits okay so people sitting at these rows they um, they need to be over 16 years of age they need to uh, be you know uh, in good physical condition which means that they cannot have some kind of impairment so if you are for example a wheelchair passenger you are not allowed to sit over the overwing exits and you also have to be able to only use the standard with seatbelt okay so if you need a seatbelt extension for whatever reason that is not allowed either for the simple reason that extra seatbelts might tangle in to the feet of the people needing to evacuate okay now the, I mentioned that these were, cal, uh, were kept uh, locked by mechanical locks, and these mechanical locks are automatic. They will, um, they will engage when a number of different criteria is fulfilled. Uh, three of the four main doors needs to be closed. The um, aircraft should be, uh, have DC power available, and it needs to be feeling that it is in the air or that the thrust levels are advanced for takeoff, right? When those uh, conditions are met, the mechanical locks will be automatically engaged. And if they don't, we are going to get a um, proximity switch electronic unit, a PSEU warning up in the flight deck. We're not allowed to go with that. We need to call engineering, okay? So as we're starting to taxi, they're still available to open. Um, because the doors are closed, but the start level, sorry, the, the thrust levels are not advanced for takeoff. But then, as soon as the aircraft gets airborne, as we set the takeoff thrust, they will have locks, okay, and you cannot open them. But if any of those criteria are not satisfied, well, in that case, you can open them, and that is to be able for us to evacuate the aircraft as quickly as possible if something would happen as we're taxiing, for example. Let's say that there would be a fire indicated, then me, I might call for an evacuation quickly, and the people sitting at the overwing exit then have to be able to open it quickly. Right, so. Uh, Boeing and Airbus have very different philosophies when it comes to the overwing exit. Now, in Airbus, at least in the earlier models, uh, you need to be able to... You, basically, you're opening the door, you're lifting it in, and then you're throwing it out. Okay, So you're actually physically removing the door, throwing it out, and then you get out on the wing and you slide down, either using slides on the bigger, air, on the bigger types or using the flaps. Now, Boeing is different. This is a canopy type. It can be opened both from the inside using these handles up here and also from the outside. Okay, but if you're opening it from the outside, if you're a firefighter, for example, you have to be very, very careful. And I'll show you why in a second. Right, these covers up here, they have to be installed during passenger flight. So if we're traveling with passengers, these covers, these plastic covers have to be installed. Right, uh, and that is to, for, to avoid people kind of accidentally moving these while on the ground. But 
And I also want to take this opportunity, guys, to explain why it's a really, really bad idea to open these doors. I know there was a video that went viral just a few weeks back with a passenger who, the, who was uh, in a delay on the ground and decided just to open it up to go out and get some air. Now, that is a very, very bad idea to do because it will trigger a warning for us. We will see that the overwing exit have been opened and there's no way of resetting that without access to ma maintenance personnel. So if you do that, you are going to delay the flight further. I mean, if you do it before takeoff, we will not be able to take off. And in most likelihood, you are going to be liable for the financial effect of that delay because we are not in any case, we're not allowed to open this unless it is in an emergency. Okay, so it's not a good idea. Right, so how do we open it then? Right, so there's a description here at the top. Uh, if you are ever in a situation where you are the one who needs to open this, the cabin crew will have given you a briefing. Because you are an able-bodied person, they would have given you a briefing before departure of you know where the instructions are, what you're expected to do in case of a evacuation. So basically, it's very, very simple. Okay, You reach in with your hand below this, and then you just pull it down. And that happens. All right? The plastic cover falls out, the door slams open like this, and you're able to just walk out, okay? There are some things here that people uh, are not always aware about. Up here in the corner, there's a lanyard. You can see it partially up here. That lanyard, uh, if you're the first person who is going to evacuate, you are supposed to take this lanyard with you, just make sure that it doesn't fall out now. Also take this lanyard with you and attach it. Maybe you've seen that little yellow um, holder out on the wing. If you're sitting at the overwing exits and you're watching the wings, you will see that there is a little yellow tag out on the wing. Well, this lanyard can be attached to there and it's used as a rope to, to hold people who, you know, it might be windy outside, it might be fire, it might be stuff that you cannot, um, you know, that you need help basically to hold yourself steady as you're getting out. And then when you get out of the wings, you will see that there are some black arrows showing you where to go. So basically you're just turning left, following these arrows, and then you slide using the flaps, so it should be set to 40 by that point, down onto the ground, run away from the aircraft, okay? That's the idea behind it. So if you're ever in that situation, open it, get out, run down, and then if you're an able-bodied person and you feel that you can help downstairs, you could potentially help to get people away. But in most cases, it's better for you to just get away from the aircraft to a safe distance, okay? Now, if you're interested in seeing how we are actually doing the evacuation, how we're commanding and, and setting up the flight deck to do the, the evacuation correctly, I have a uh, playlist, a collection inside of the Mentor Aviation app. So if you get the Mentor Aviation app and you get the rejected takeoff and emergency evacuation collection, you'll be able to see exactly what we do in the flight deck to make sure that before the aircraft is starting to be evacuated, the engines are shut off because obviously if the engines are still running, there's going to be a, you know, a jet blast behind just where the passenger is coming out. So it's really important that we follow some very, very strict protocol for how to evacuate the aircraft before we give the evacuation command. Guys, I hope you like that. Uh, if you have any questions when it comes to how to use this door or evacuation procedures as such, just send them in below. Have an absolutely fantastic day. Make sure you have subscribed to the channel. I'm gonna make more and more of these type of videos where you get to see actual aircraft parts. Take care of yourself and bye bye.